All right, everybody, welcome back. On today's episode, uh, we have a Cobra 18 WX ST CB radio that has uh, intermittent transmit and receive. And uh, doing some research, it appears that uh, there are um, plug in modules. Well, I say plug in. They are daughter boards that plug in through the main board and then are soldered on on the bottom. And uh, they develop intermittent connection issues. And uh, I can tell from looking at them that uh, the soldering job that was done here is just uh, terrible. So what I'm going to do is uh, on each one of the uh, four daughter boards, I'm going to go through and, uh, well, five daughter boards, I'm going to go through and re-solder the connections, uh, use a little solder wick to, uh, to pull the current solder off and uh, put on some, uh, some good quality solder. And then that way we don't have to worry about uh, mixing solder types or uh, anything along those lines. We'll just know that we have uh, good quality solder here. Alright, very good. So, get some solder here. Uh, if I can figure out which end it's wrapped onto. I dropped and broke my reel for uh, this smaller solder, so uh, I just had to wrap it around uh, something that was convenient. Whew. Man, that stinks. Board material they used here, when it gets hot, it, uh, it smells pretty bad. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. All right. I think one thing I am going to do is I'm going to get my uh, finer tipped iron down. Uh, this work is a little bit possibly too fine for, uh, for the chisel tip iron that I have. So we'll go ahead and fire up the uh, fire and fine tip Solomon iron and, uh, and go from there. All right. One of the reasons that I'm working on this, not up to temperature yet, is that I've read that uh, there are some changes upcoming to uh, part 95, uh, which is uh, CB, FRS, and uh, GMRS. So I'm going to get a CB radio ready uh, that I can have either here in the ham shack or in the truck, uh, and then that way I can... Uh, get back into that. That's actually where I got my start at and uh, I've just been away from it from, uh, from CB radio for a long time. And I've got some of those bubble pack FRS radios but uh, the rules have been confusing uh, with those combo radios and so I just don't use them for very much. And uh, I've gotten those out too and I'd like to uh, get them set up so that I can use them when I do tower climbing jobs and such. I'm just going to go through and retouch up all the connections here. Make sure that they, uh, they have good flow out and that they look like they're well connected. Uh, with these daughter boards, I don't know why they did this. Uh, vibration over time flexes these connections and they get loose. And then uh, once they're loose, you get uh, all kinds of intermittent issues with the radio. So it would have been better if they had just had uh, maybe a big daughter board or uh, a different way of connecting these boards. But uh, that's the way they did it. This uh, radio was manufactured by Lighton for Cobra. And uh, I noticed that in the second version of this radio, the 18WX ST2, uh, that they used a different manufacturer. So maybe uh, they just had too many issues. Uh, I don't know. 
anything's possible. But we're going to go through and get this cleaned up and uh, resoldered, and hopefully, once we've done that, then uh, everything will work nicely. From what I've read, yeah, that usually brings these radios back around to uh, functioning correctly, uh, you know, unless they have some sort of other issue, like they need to be recapped or something, which uh, that's always something that we can do after the fact. And besides, this is basically free other than my time, this uh, resoldering work. And if it brings the radio around, then I can consider investing the, uh, the money to do the, uh, the recap job on it. So that's not too bad. We'll be able to test this shortly. Good. This board is actually not soldered in very well at all. There's almost no solder on the connections. So I'm just going to go ahead and add solder to it. Oh, that bridged. Oh, now the bridge moved. <laughs> that happens. That's one of the things that we have to, uh, to watch for. Is that we don't get that. There we go. I'm not sure if they, uh, if this radio was manufactured during the era of uh, lead free solder or if they just did a really poor job on soldering, but uh, this radio looks like it has some issues. Oh, that's taken a while to heat up. That's a ground plane connection. Those are going to do that. They're going to be troublesome. There we go. Uh, these other daughter boards also look like they don't have very much solder on them, so we're just going to add a little bit. They're about at the point I would have gotten them to with the braid. So I don't know if uh, they just didn't solder them completely or, uh, or what was going on there. Uh, here we are on this daughter board it looks like uh, one of these terminals has already been resoldered. This radio is one that I picked up at a garage sale many many years ago and uh, the issue with it, which was a quick fix at the time, was that the uh, reverse protection diode in it was blown out. So I uh, replaced it and that brought it back around to working. There's actually more than a few of these little daughter boards. You kind of have to look around to see where they're at. Alright, we're almost done here with uh, the resolder. So we'll be able to uh, hook up and test, transmit and receive. And everything's looking pretty good there. All right, pretty satisfied with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the recording here and uh, hook this radio up for testing. And uh, I'll uh, come back and start the recording again and we'll see uh, how this radio is doing. So uh, we'll be back in just a second. All right, we're back. So I've got my test set up hooked up. Uh, 
the uh, Cobra 18 WXST through the Radio Shack power meter into my uh, Wavetech 2100 service monitor and out to a dummy load. So, uh, we're in receive mode. I'm going to go ahead and key the uh, transmitter. Alright, says that we're doing 4.4, uh, 4.5 watts on uh, 27.185, radio set for channel 19. We're going to set for error. It looks like we're around 35, 40 cycles off, so that's not too bad. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move to uh, generate and uh, add a 1 kilohertz tone. So it's looking good there. We're looking at about 0.1 millivolts. So uh, not too bad at all. And uh, we can uh, go back to receive. Test, 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 test. One, two, three, four. Hello, audio. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we're making uh, one, two, three, four, five. Making good power and uh, it's looking pretty good. And we can receive weather. I'm uh, fairly close to uh, a weather service station transmitter. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, sit back and receive. So things are looking good. I'll go ahead and get the covers put back on. Looks like this radio is fixed. So, um, we can put this one in service. Of course, it's only 40 channel AM. Uh, I'd like to get a single sideband rig. Uh, I do have that single sideband 132A, but it's been converted to 10 meter. So I'll just have to uh, work at getting something that'll do what I want to do. But for now, this is going to be a good start. Anyways, uh, I hope this video has been informative for you guys. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, um, and uh, remember to share and subscribe, and uh, if there's anything else I can do for you, just let me know. Have a great day.